Hello everyone, in this tutorial we explain how to install Anaconda. For those of you who are not familiar with Anaconda, Anaconda is a very powerful Python software development environment. I like Anaconda a lot since it really simplifies installation of different packages, creating different environments, and I especially like Anaconda because it comes with Spider. Spider is a very powerful Python editor that resembles MATLAB and you can very quickly debug Python codes and programs in Spider. Okay, let's start with installation process. To install Anaconda in Linux Ubuntu you will need to perform several steps. Okay, now here is one warning. Over here I will simply copy and paste the commands However, it's not a good idea to do that. Always try to type commands by yourself. Only in that way you will be able to use and to learn how to use Linux Terminal. Okay, so let's start the Linux Terminal. The easiest way to do that is like this. Click over here, then search for Terminal. And here it is. Now, I will resize this window such that at the same time you can see what I'm typing in the terminal and you can follow a small manual that I wrote. Okay, so what do we need to do? Every time you want to do something in Linux, that is install a new program or for example new computer game even, you need to run these two commands. sudo apt update, enter your password, and you need to run sudo apt upgrade. I recently run these two commands, so these commands will execute relatively quickly. You can see that zero is upgraded. This is because I run this commands, these two commands quite often. Okay, in order to use Anaconda's graphics user interface or GUI in short, we need to install Qt and all the dependencies. That is, we need to execute this complex command. This command looks complex, however, in practice it's not. What do we see over here? We have sudo apt get install, this is one command, and then we have these dependencies, or better to say these libraries. We have this one, then we have this one, 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 and finally this one. So take some time to type this. It's a good practice. And simply paste here and let's see the output. Okay, now it's fine if it doesn't have an installation candidate, it's fine. This is, this is perfect. Let's continue. The next step is to download Anaconda. For that purpose, go to this website and for example you can either register or you can skip registration. Over here I will skip registration in the interest of brevity. Now you need to find the Linux distribution. Here it is and click over here and the download process will start. Here it is. By default this file will be downloaded in the downloads folder. However if it's not found in the downloads folder you need to look into the settings of your web browser and to see where your web browser is actually storing downloaded file. In my case it will be in the standard download folder. So if I click over here and if I click on downloads here it is. Here is the file that we just downloaded. Here it is. Now if you're watching this video tutorial for example in October 2024 or later you will notice that these numbers might be different. This is the current version of Anaconda. I created this video tutorial in June 2024. Now, if you see that the version is different, you simply have to change these numbers such that you adjust the version number. The version number is 2024.06, which means it's June, and this is probably the first release in June. That's it. Now, go back to the terminal and let's navigate to our downloads folder. To navigate to a certain folder in Linux we use the command cd standing for change directory and then this symbol means that we are referring to the home directory and we need to add the path. The path will be downloads. For example by typing do and pressing tab you can see different options. 
Now if I do DOW and press tab, you can see that I will go to my downloads folder. Let's inspect the content of this folder. We do that by typing ls standing for list dash a for example or you can do la. la will give you the content of the folder with the file. So here's the file and over here we can see the extensions. We can read and write this file however we cannot execute this file and we need to set the execution priorities for this file. But before we do that, let's first verify the integrity of the installer file. To do that, we need to run this command. Oops, I made an error here. Here it is. So what is this? This scasum a 256 and the name of the file. And let's see what will happen. Here you have to be patient. And if you don't see an error or something like that, this means everything is fine. Let's now set the executable permissions to the downloaded file. To do that, we need to type this command. ch mod plus x plus x means that we are adding the executable permission and the name of the file, simply as that. Now let's verify that we have proper permissions and now you can see over here that we have X and previously we didn't have. This means that we can execute the file. Another thing that you can do, you can also repeat this command by typing sudo and doing this. This is even better and I suggest that you do this. And if you do this, now you will see that nothing changed, but it's always a good idea. The next step is to execute the installation file. To run the installation file in Linux, we will do this, dot, then this backslash or reverse backslash symbol, I'm not sure is this reverse or whatever it is, however we need to execute this. So let's do that. And this will run the installer. Press enter to continue. Now over here you can do more, 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 and then at a certain point you will be asked to accept the terms and condition. This is basically the license. So be patient over here. Be patient. Scroll all the way down. I'm trying to be very careful. And at a certain point you will be asked yes or no. And by pressing space several times you will end at this prompt and the installer will ask you do you accept the license terms. So just press or type yes. Okay, now let's see what's happening over here. Over here you need to confirm the location. Just use the default location. Don't play with the location for a time being. And then let's let's see what will happen. This will take probably several minutes or maybe even 10 minutes depending on how fast is your computer. So be patient. After some time, you will see this message. Do you wish to update your shell profile to automatically initialize Conda? This will activate Conda on startup and change the command prompt when activated. Basically, this means that every time you open a terminal, an Conda will start. Usually, we don't want to do this. However, let's say for some reason you press yes and do that, press yes. I will show you how to fix that problem later on. However, let's add Anaconda to the path. Okay, and that's it. Simple as that. Now, let's continue. Now, let's try to refresh our terminal. How do we do that? I will simply source this file. Namely, in my home folder, there is a file called .bash RC and this file contains several lines of code that are automatically executed every time I open a terminal. So for example if I do this see what happens. What is this base? Base means that you're already in the Conda or Anaconda environment. The same thing happens if you just open a new terminal. You will be automatically in the base Anaconda environment and usually we don't want to do that. This is the direct consequence of this yes. This yes actually created an additional line in our 
dot bash rc file which is automatically executed every time a new terminal is open and this automatically loads anaconda we don't want to do that so how to fix that to fix that problem you simply need to execute this command conda config set auto activate base false and let's do that okay nothing happens currently this is because we still didn't refresh our terminal we refresh our terminal by doing this and voila here it is now every time you open a new terminal you'll see that you're not starting anaconda this is very important to adjust let's close these two terminals for the time being let's open a new terminal and let's verify the installation to verify the installation we need to type this conda list and let's see what will happen and you can see all the programs, libraries, and packages that are installed. You can see that Python is installed, etc. Okay, let's continue. The next step is basically to learn how to start Anaconda Navigator. I usually use Anaconda from a navigator since the navigator enables you to quickly start the program you need. To do that, you will open a new terminal. Then, first of all, you will run Conda Activate and you will see now that you're in the base environment in the base anaconda environment and to start the anaconda navigator simply run this command and let's hope that everything will work properly now here you have to be patient and a good sign that we are seeing this we are seeing this window close this and voila here you are you're actually in the anaconda navigator okay so let's do this no i don't want this to be shown again and here are the programs here is the jupiter which is a very popular notebook and here is spider let's test our anaconda installation by running spider here is the spider this is a new version of spider and i like spider quite a lot and here i can type some python commands let's execute several python commands just to make sure that everything is installed properly let's first of all see do we have numpy, numpy. import numpy as mp okay so let's try to execute this and to see okay we have numpy so let's define a matrix a is np dot array and let's specify for example this to be one two and this will be 3, 4. So the first row is 1, 2. The second row is 3, 4. And let's see our matrix A. Here it is. Let's define the matrix B. Similarly, numpy.array. And let's specify matrix B. Let's, for example, do something like this. 5, 6, 7.8 okay let's do that here's our a and b here's b let's multiply a and b we can do it like this using the monkey or the add symbol and here's the result okay it looks like it works let's just verify this by using numpy math multiply and we specify a comma b and we should get the same results. Cool! This means that the spider is working and this means that we have properly installed Anaconda. Next, let's close our spider and let's go back to the Anaconda environment or better to say the Anaconda navigator. Often you would like to install for example some Python package or something similar. Let's learn how to do that. This is very important. Now, here you have environments. So if you click on environments, this is your base or root environments, and you can see all the packages that are being installed. There is a quite some list. List is very long. Let's search, for example, TensorFlow. Let's see what do we have. Do we have TensorFlow? Do we have PyTorch? Do we have NumPy? Let's see. Here's NumPy. Okay, cool. But let's say if you don't have NumPy and if you want to install NumPy. To do that, simply click over here, open terminal. Now, be patient over here. 
and here we are, we are in the terminal. However, for the time being, let's close this terminal. Now, this original terminal that you used to start Anaconda should not be closed. Keep in mind this, because if you close this terminal, this navigator will be closed. Let's close these two, and let's repeat this terminal, and here is the terminal. And then in this terminal you can type, for example, pip install numpy. And you can see that the, time, the requirement is already satisfied. However, let's try another package to install. Let's try to install the gym package. The gym package is used for reinforcement learning. So we need to type pip install gym. And this should install gym package. You can see the installation, progress, and you can see successfully build gym. That's it. Now, if you go back here and if you restart your Anaconda Navigator, you should see Jim over here. Currently, if we type, we will not be able to see Jim since we didn't restart Anaconda Navigator. Okay, that's all for today.